she going to get this on? Ajahn Poo is an icon in our country. To be introduced like that by her is an honor unsurpassed. I will accept your kind words on behalf of the House Democrats who make everything that we do in the House possible. Thank you, Ajahn, for your remarkable leadership uh, and your successful mo mobilization of so many people. My friends, this is about family, it's about children, and it's about time. It's about time that we get all of this done. Uh, I'm honored to be here with our colleagues, uh, the, the senators uh, who are here, uh, two who were formerly in the House, and when the leader comes, he will be three who were formerly in the House, uh, Senator Gillibrand, uh, Senator, uh, well, Senator Wyden. And let me just say this, when we passed family and medical leave in the House before. Bill Clinton had just become president. We had been working on it for a long time. Ron Wyden was in the House, and Patty Murray was working on this in their first bill in the United States Senate. And all of us knew that family medical leave had to be paid if it was really going to be effective. Uh, while I'm honored to be here with the senators, I want to acknowledge Rosa DeLauro, who has been a godmother of all of these issues for such a long time, and Bobby Scott, the chair of the uh, Education and Labor Committee, and Richie Neal, again, the committees of jurisdiction. But let me talk to you about Rosa for a second. When we did a bus trip, we did a bus trip when Women Succeed, America Succeeds, a number of years ago. We were in her district for one of our stops. And a woman came to the front to speak. She was a school bus driver. And she said, let me tell you what I see every school day. I see moms come to the curb with their child, frequently crying, the child sniffling. She has to put the child on the bus sick because she has no alternative, no paid family and medical leave, no decent wages to afford child care, no child care. Everything we're talking about affects that woman putting a sick child on the bus and what that means to the child and the other children. In the United States of America, in the United States of America, this was happening. So now, under the leadership of Joe Biden and the Biden-Harris administration with Democrats in the House and the Senate, we will have this happen. And so let's make history. Chair can't wait. Paid leave for all. The fact that it will now be paid is, makes a, a tremendous difference, as you know. And so I want to just say how um, impressed I am by the coalition. Because I always say, you know, we can do so much maneuvering in the Congress. But the outside mobilization for all of these issues is really what makes the work successful and better. So I want to thank all who are here. Uh, from all the groups, from the National Domestic Workers Alliance, Moms Rising, Bright Start, Early Care and Preschool, yeah. Universal Preschool. Yes. Yes. It's about time. Yeah. It's about time. Yeah. National Coalition on Black Civic Participation and Black Women's Roundtable, National Partnership for Women and Ch Families, the ARC, Metro Washington Council, AFL-CIO, Labor Project for Working Families. The list goes on and on. And understand, when you go back, thank all of the people that you work with. Acknowledge and let them know that we acknowledge that we can't do any of this without them. So we're going to have, uh, just think of the liberation this is for families, for moms to be able to work, dads too. It's not just about the children, as I, I, has been said by others already, by Dawn, oh, thank, you, thank you, Dawn, for your leadership, and uh, I, Jen, that this is about home health care, too, not just about children, but home health care and the respect we should have. I'll close by just saying in one of my uh, town meetings in San Francisco when we talked about home health care, and they, one of the witnesses who was a, a home health care worker she said, you know, when they complain to me about the fact that I want to raise a decent pay uh, for caring for, for their family, I'll say, if you don't think I'm worth it, do you think your mother's worth it? Yeah. <laughs> do you think your mother's worth it? Well, we think our children, our mothers, anyone that needs care is worth it. We think that the, uh, well, I'll just say what we say in San Francisco, 
children learning, parents earning. That's what our country should be about. So with that, now who am I yielding to? Now I'm going to yield to all Chuck Schumer, but he's not here. But again, right here from the start of family and medical leave, uh, Senator Patty Murray, Patty Murray, and now the chair of the health committee, which is the committee of jurisdiction, as you know, in the Senate. But help indeed she has done all along the way. Uh, her values on this subject are renowned. I don't have to tell you about them, but I do want to thank her for them right now as I yield to the distinguished senator, the mom in sneakers in, from the state of Washington. Right, still in sneakers. There we go. She's been walking and working and marching for the children, for our family. Senator, Madam Chair, Patty Murray. Madam Speaker, it is an honor to be introduced by the longest champion I have ever known uh, for these issues uh, regarding our children and our ability to participate in this economy in our great country in a meaningful way. Thank you for your tremendous work and to um, our allies in the House uh, who couldn't be here with us today but who have just been such tremendous champions and who are leading the way along with Speaker Pelosi to get this done. Rosa Delora and Bobby Scott are great partners and I want to really acknowledge them and I am del <laughs> that huge applause line and I'm delighted to be here with Senator uh, Gillibrand who it was the original introducer of the paid family leave in the Senate who has not stopped advocating and fighting for this every step of the way we're gonna get there <laughs> we're gonna get there um, and the chairman of the Finance Committee Ron Wyden who's been our partner in getting this done we're delighted that uh, this is not just a women's issue it's a men's issue he is representing all the men in this country who know as much as all of us do how important this is and of course to the great advocates and leaders behind us thank you for for being there every step of the way you know I, I thank you to the paid leave for all team for this incredible event and what you're doing for everyone who's here and all of your support um, as the speaker said, I have been fighting for paid leave since I first got into politics. And when I first came into the Senate back in 1993, the very first bill on the floor that we worked for weeks to get passed under Senator Ted Kennedy was the Family and Medical Leave Act. And it was a huge accomplishment. But it was unpaid. But it did allow people to take time off when someone in their family was seriously ill. But it was clear at the time that was just the first step. 1993, first step, and we have been fighting every day since to build on that progress and pass paid leave for all. You know, today we're the only developed country in the world that doesn't guarantee paid leave. That's astonishing. We are the only developed country where working parents can't afford to take time off after giving birth, or after a partner's delivery, or after adopting a child, or where workers have to choose between a paycheck and taking care of themselves, or a child, or a loved one who's seriously ill. That is unacceptable in the United States of America. It is a national disgrace that in 2021, we are still forcing workers to make impossible choices. So it is long past time this country establish a national paid family and medical leave program. And you know, this policy isn't just good for working families. This is good for our economy. Our lack of care policies, including paid leave, is costing our economy billions each year because women are forced out of the workforce. And paid leave wouldn't just help employers retain their employees and boost productivity. It's going to help small businesses compete on a level playing field with larger corporations who offer paid leave. Paid leave is going to keep our communities healthier. We know when workers with serious illnesses have paid medical leave, they are better able to manage ongoing treatments. And paid family leave helps parents and kids stay healthy. And by the way, paid leave will help us counter the systemic racial and gender inequities in our workforce. We all know women do the majority of caregiving work and we face huge challenges without paid leave. Workers of color are less likely to have access to paid leave and women of color in particular who are more likely to have significant care responsibilities 
disproportionately see lost wages and professional setbacks as a result. I got to tell you, for years now, I have been banging on doors in Congress trying to get my colleagues to talk about paid leave. And it's been pretty lonely, right, Kirsten? <laughs> uh, but you know, we know we need to make child care affordable. We know we need to provide home care. We know we need to make sure our care workers have paid wages. These issues have so long just been an afterthought to the, quote, real economic problems. But you know what? COVID-19 thrust these once silent epidemics to the center stage. And now I have colleagues coming up to me on a daily basis and going, Patty, this is a big problem. What? You didn't know? Well, now you do, and we do too. So this is our moment to get this done. I am so committed to this fight with all of my brothers and sisters up here, and I'm so glad that all of you are fighting alongside this. Let's get this done. Thank you so much. Uh, just listening to Patty talk about those early days reminds me of Congressman George Miller, who was chairman in the House, who was so instrumental in doing this, and in the Senate, Chris Dodd of Connecticut. He they just made it their life work for a very long time that would come to fruition. They weren't they? <laughs> they were the grandparents of this issue. That's right. <laughs> Our next speaker is our majority leader in the Senate, who has been at the forefront of family issues, paid leave, affordable daycare, universal pre-K. He's been there advocating for it, and he's going to get it across the finish line. Senator Chuck Schumer. Well, first, I want to th first I want to hold my papers you're, down. You're on your own. Man. There you are, colleague. <laughs> we have such good members. <laughs> Ron Wyden does everything. He's the all-purpose finance chairman. <laughs> anyway, it's great to be here. I want to thank our great speaker, Nancy Pelosi. She mentioned George Miller, my landlord, for 35 years. I used to tell people I've lived with my wife 37 years and with George Miller 35 years, because he was the house in which we lived. Uh, but she has been such a passionate leader for all of these things, and we're great partners. And we probably talk to each other about five, six times a day. And as I've mentioned previously, she once in a while now laughs at my jokes. I want to thank Patty Murray. She has been an inspiration to all of us in the Senate in fighting for these issues. Every time Patty raises her hand in the caucus, everyone knows that she is going to speak about families. She's going to speak about children in a persistent, passionate, and so intelligent and thoughtful way. She's our leader on these issues, and we're great to have her. And the, uh, and the two men here, Chuck Schumer and Ron Wyden, willingly follow her lead. And I could say the same thing about my great partner and friend on this issue, uh, Kirsten Gillibrand. You know, having a more diverse Senate or any legislative body really makes a difference. We saw it yesterday when Cori Bush had been evicted herself and knew the horror of being evicted and led the charge. But both Kirsten and Patty, as well as Speaker Pelosi, have seen how women are discriminated against, how our laws never paid attention to things that matter, of course to all of us and of course to families, but to women in particular. And the fact that they are in the Senate and the fact that they are working so hard on these issues and are beacons for us means that we are going to succeed on these issues. So how many of you were on the bus? Hi, bus, bus people. We're also trying to get some money for electric buses, so those buses are nice and clean. There's a lot of things to do. We got a lot to do. But in any case, this is an amazing moment for our country. It's a unique moment. It's a unique moment. When you think back to our history and you realize there are certain moments where you can change America, and Franklin D. Roosevelt did that in the 30s, and Lyndon Johnson did it in the Great Society, and we have that unique opportunity. It comes around about once every 50 years, and here we are. Let us not forsake it. It's too important. Now, people are beginning after this vaccines are being distributed. And by the way, I saw that Governor DeSantis, the anti-vaccine person, is now behind in the polls to Governor Christ. Yeah, it doesn't, doesn't pay to be backward on these issues, even politically. But in any case, 
um, now that we're getting back to work, we're starting to rebuild our lives. Too many families still struggle to make ends meet. And what COVID has done is it's sort of like a magnifying glass. I like to say about Dr. King, the great, one of the greatest men America ever had, Dr. Martin Luther King, that with his broad shoulders, he held up a giant mirror. And then with his intelligence, his eloquence, and his faith, he forced America to look into that mirror, and they didn't like what they saw, and that began the long road, which we're still trotting, of racial equality, towards racial equality. Well, COVID, in a different way, did the same thing. It exhibited all the problems in our society. It exacerbated the problems of lack of child care. It exacerbated and showed the problems of lack of sick leave and family leave. It showed how families in modern America are struggling. The old days, you know, when there was, you know, when I was a kid, my father was an exterminator. My mother was what's called a housewife. She stayed home. And when, when the car broke down, when they didn't have money, when someone got sick, when someone had to travel, when someone was having a child or had a parent who was very sick, there was at least one parent always there. Do you know what percentage of families are like that now? About 16% of all families are two-parent families with only one parent working. The rest are either single parents or both parents working because you can't survive unless both parents work if you're a two-family family, uh, family two-person family, two-adult family. And so we need these changes. COVID showed we needed these changes. We needed them before COVID. But COVID highlighted these changes. And that's why what President Biden has done with his Build Back Better and the families part of Build Back Better is so, so vital. Whether it's paid leave, which I know people took the bus trip for, or home care, or uh, child care, we need it all. We need to help average families, middle class families, deal with the struggles they deal with day to day. We need to help those who are trying to struggle to get to the middle class make it easier. And the things we're standing for here, paid leave, family leave, sick leave, child care, and all the other issues in the family's bill can make that happen. So, as I said when I started, this is a unique moment for all of us. Let us not pass it by. Let us not pass it by and we will make all of us, all of you, all of you, and not all of, but the majority of people over there, we're all going to make it happen. Thank you. There you go. Thank you, Chuck. Thank you so much, Leader. Thank you for being here today. And it is now my great honor to bring up uh, one of the co-sponsors of the Family Act, one of our long-term champions and warriors. Also, I want to add quickly, we were in New York State. And we heard about paid leave. We were in Albany in New York City. And we heard about uh, the importance of paid leave from small businesses, advocates, families. And they both, they all thanked you both. So thank you for championing this. And now to our warrior, Senator Kirsten Gillibrand. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Um, I want to start by thanking Leader Schumer. Um, it makes such a difference to have the majority leader of the United States care about national paid leave. It makes all the difference in negotiating and being at this position we are right now. Ten years. <laughs> true, that's 12. Okay, um, all true. I want to thank our extraordinary speaker. Um, I've never met a person who has seen her responsibility as a leader in the prism of families more than I've seen from Speaker Pelosi. She understands fundamentally that America can't recover if American families can't recover. And so she is such a, a not only a poignant advocate, but somebody who's lived it, knows it, feels it, breathes it, and is willing to fight for it. So thank you so much, Leader Pelosi, I mean, Speaker Pelosi. I want to thank my two colleagues in the Senate. Um, Patty Murray is such an extraordinary leader for the HELP Committee. 
Um, I don't think anyone's ever taken on such an expansive issues and delivered year after year after year, whether she's fighting for paid leave or sick days or affordable daycare or universal pre-K. She's at the forefront of writing the legislation. She literally knows these issues inside and out, and I'm just blessed to work with her every single day. And I want to thank Senator Wyden, uh, because as chair of the Finance Committee, it all goes through him. And I remember having lunch with him probably three or four years ago and talking about why this was so important. And not only did he get it immediately, but he committed right there and then, I will be with you every step of the way. And without him, we would not get this across the finish line. Thank you so much, Senator Wyden. So I want to agree with uh, the remarks of all my colleagues. Um, this is an issue not only whose time has come, but an issue that re represents the values of America. We've seen how this pandemic exacerbated longstanding inequities. And we've seen how if we had had the basic care economy moving and the infrastructure behind it, this pandemic would not have hit people so hard. Just imagine for a moment that we actually had paid leave in place when this pandemic hit. It would have meant that people could have stayed on their jobs. It would have meant they would have continued to have an income. And it would have meant that they would be able to secure and keep their children safe. When children and families had to stay home because schools were closed, Parents had to make the tough decisions of who would have to quit their job and who would no longer be able to earn an income. That was a devastating, devastating decision for so many parents. It was not easy, and it resulted in millions, millions, over five million women leaving the workplace to meet those urgent needs of their families. Add to that all the crises we saw with families who had an ill family member. Who was available to stay home when someone was ill with COVID? COVID didn't come and go within days. Sometimes it lasted weeks. Sometimes it lasted months. And so families had to make that tough decision over and over again as to who would stay home. And so this economy has been forever harmed because we didn't have the basic care economy, the basic care infrastructure in place before it. If we had had different leaders, if we had had a different vision over the decades before, we would have been better prepared. But we have not had the coalition and the ability to be at the precipice of passing this care economy than we have today. We are in a unique moment in history. This has taken over 20 years of advocacy from the people standing with us today. Organizations that understand how important this family plan is. Joe Biden believes in the American Families Plan. He knows America does not recover until American families recover. And so this is fundamental to our democracy. It is fundamental to who we are. And so I know because of the work that's been put in with everyone on this stage, with everyone who's been on this bus, with everyone who's here with us today, this will get done. This is the moment when our leadership and our advocacy matters. The fact that we have the House and the Senate and the presidency is why we will get national paid leave done. It is why we will be able to create economic recovery for everyone. Now, I know we've had a big dis debate about what is infrastructure in America, but let's define infrastructure. Is that what is required to get the economy moving again? Well, I can promise you that definitely includes roads and bridges and sewers and high-speed rail and rural broadband and new IT. But I promise you also, it also includes having a national paid and family leave program. It also includes universal pre-K and affordable daycare. It includes equal pay. These are the fundamental things that allow people to get back to work, to let the economy recover. And you cannot recover without both sides, both the hard traditional infrastructure and the soft human infrastructure, the care economy that we are talking about today. And we are now on the precipice of passing this essential legislation. So thank you to everyone. And I now get to call up Senator Ron Wyden, who as chairman of the Finance Committee, is going to write this bill and get it done. Thank, thank you, Senator Gillibrand, and to the speaker and my Northwest colleagues, Senator Murray, Senator Gillibrand, Rosa DeLora, Ms. Apu, the wonderful uh, folks that are here today have all spent, in the case of my colleagues, decades, decades and decades making the case
making the case for why this is so essential. Now, how many of you have heard of something called reconciliation? Now, I can tell you, if you walked into a coffee shop in America, you wouldn't find one out of a hundred people who'd be up on this. But the reason I bring it up is because what all of us are showing with our presence today is we are going to be mobilizing in every corner of the country because we are going to need every single vote. Every single vote, literally and figuratively. And what I just wanted to mention, because Senator Gillibrand said it and Senator Schumer, that yes, the Senate Finance Committee, because of some technical kinds of matters, as Senator Murray and I are always working out every single day, we're going to have to sign off. We're going to work together on it. But let me tell you what our pledge is today with the speaker, with the majority leader, with my wonderful colleagues. Our pledge to you is when Congress gets done this fall, family leave, paid family leave, will not be on the cutting room floor. And I'll just close, I'll just close by saying the alternative is unacceptable. It's unacceptable that new mothers are forced to choose between recovering from childbirth or going back to work immediately. It's unacceptable that families are left with no options when a family member becomes seriously ill, something I've cared about since my days with the Grey Panthers. We're just saying those kinds of practices that have been so unacceptable are going to be part of the past. We're going to try this fall to make sure that those practices go into the dustbin of outdated policies that shortchanged families. So yes, this is part of what we got to deal with in the Finance Committee, but every one of us are going to be working every single committee because our pledge to you is we're going to deliver every single vote for paid leave. Thank you.